Elden Ring is a game I've already played and platinumed the week it came out. But since I still wanted to make a video on this game, I came up with a wacky idea to keep things fresh. Can you 100% Elden Ring without healing? And yes, I said 100%, which means collecting all 42 trophies for the platinum and defeating all 165 bosses all without healing. Will I be able to pull off such a crazy task or will I lose all of my sanity while trying? Let's find out. I start off by creating the most logical character for a run like this. I choose the prisoner as my starter class and the golden seed for my keepsake to give me another magic flask right off the bat. And yes, my build is going to be heavily based on magic for the most part as that will most likely give me the highest chance of survival. I do the basics like pick up torrent and collect the spirit calling bell which will be very important. I find and kill the NPC Knight Bernal for his armor so that we can have a little bit of defense going into these fights. Most of my time in the beginning of this run was spent collecting important items for my build and farming runes. A lot of runes. I did the good old dragon bleed farm in Kaelid for some easy runes and it was around this time where I collected my first trophy for simply reaching the round table hold which is pretty much this game's hub. It was now time to start taking down some bosses. Our first victim is Margit and as you could expect from all the leveling that I was doing, Margit got absolutely clapped on. I'm talking slam dunk sack on the forehead clapped on. I even finished him off with my sword because I felt bad at how much damage the magic was doing. Maybe I'm a little bit over leveled. Anyways, first boss down, on to the next. Also, because this video is a platinum run, I won't exactly be going in order of all the bosses. There's going to be a lot of running around for trophy cleanup as you will see. Which then brings us to this next fight, Leonine Misbegotten. At least I think that's how you pronounce his name. And just like Margit, this boss did not stand a chance. I then make my way through the castle to face Godric with little issues. <laughs> But the fight itself was actually easier than getting to Godric. I just stood back battering him with Rock Sling and the fight was over before it even started. Maybe this challenge was going to be easier than I thought. With Godric defeated, I kill this NPC and make my way to Godric's Great Rune. Trophy wise, we only need to collect one Great Rune in the game. And the reason I went with Godric's Great Rune is that it gives you a plus five to all attributes, which is pretty nice. I then come across Magma Worm Makar. I found that cycling around this pillar and shooting Rock Sling at the boss was the best way to take care of this fight. Although in the first First attempt he decided to hit me straight through the pillar which I'm not sure how that makes sense but get it I guess but on the second try the strategy worked and the magma worm was defeated from there, I decided to kill both tree sentinels guarding the capital outskirts and set up my wanderous physic with the stone barb crack tier, which makes enemies more likely to break their stance, and the hidden tier, which eliminates all FP consumption, basically giving me infinite ammo for a few seconds. With this acquired, I take out Royal Knight Loretta. The stance break from the wanderous physic was kind of working, but Loretta just seemed to brush it off like it was nothing. And this was a close fight. If it wasn't for my wolves, I would have been dead. But luckily, the good boys came to save the day. With that boss out of the way, we can now side with Ronnie for one of the endings, which is needed for a trophy. Next up on the list of bosses is Big Boy Radon. Now it's been a while since I've done this fight, so I was getting absolutely clapped on in the beginning. These first few attempts went so bad, especially if you forget the second phase mechanic. The fuck? I had a few other good attempts like this one until I realized Radon downloads legit aimbot and just to top it off if Torrent dies he's dead for the rest of the encounter as the only way to bring him back is with a healing flask which I do not have. Sorry Torrent I'll avenge you. So on the next attempt Radon kills Torrent and goes into his meteor attack. Seeing Radon coming out of the sky I run for my freaking life. Luckily he chose to go after the NPCs instead of me so I try to get to a safe distance and blast him with rock sling and eventually the first major roadblock goes down. After defeating Radon, a massive meteor hits the map, opening up a new major area. Hey, you. You're finally awake. So I take the time to explore this new area, and I immediately remember what was down here. I was about to face myself in a 1v1 mimic battle, so I stripped off all of my armor and weapons, and prepared for the longest hand-to-hand -hand combat battle of my life. Right away I was ready to throw hands, but the damage that I was outputting was very questionable. The fighting went on for a little bit until I decided to summon the wolves to speed up the process. And even with the wolves, this fight took ages. So to make things fair, once he hit half health, I put away the wolves and began the fight. I still don't know why I did this. The footage was over an hour long and this whole process just took forever but eventually we came neck and neck and the battle was almost completed i decided i wanted to finish him with a jumping slam attack so that's what i did after an hour of fighting to the death the mimic tier goes down and i get my trophy 
Later on, I actually pick up and use the Mimic Summon, so I say this was a pretty fair way to get the summon. From here, I progress the Ronnie quest line, collecting her doll and killing the NPC Blyde, which, rest in peace, he's my favorite character in the game. And then I find myself in the worst area in the game, the Lake of Rot. You see, usually you would be able to run through this whole area while spamming heals and get through perfectly fine. But because this is a no heal run, this changes things drastically. I then had a big brain moment and remembered how I could get through this. There is an armor set in this game in the Seathwater Cave called the Mushroom Set, which makes you look like a clicker from The Last of Us and gives you higher immunity to Scarlet Rot. With this, I was able to cross the Lake of Rot and make it safely to the Grace. Alright, let's see the reason why we came all the way down here. Thank you, Elden Ring. Yeah, Estelle is a boss that I really, really struggled on, especially the mini boss version that we'll get into a little bit later. This fight for me is just a pain every single time I attempt it. So we will be back here shortly. For now, I return back to Liernia for some boss cleanup. I defeat the big red puppy with little to no issues. This fight was more sad than anything. Rest in peace, Sif's long lost brother. And I make my way to Cream Renala. What did I oh just- my god. What do you mean by that? I can't believe I just said that. And I make my way to Queen Renala. In the first phase, I go around playing whack-a-mole with all the students, and for the most part, this went pretty smooth. When it was time to damage, I just spammed Rock Sling, and that was pretty much it. The second phase, though, is where things got tricky. I never realized how many attacks Renala actually has, so this kind of caught me off guard, and I was only able to get her to half health on my first attempt. Not too bad. Second attempt was going a little bit better, until she decided to turn her staff into a blender, and by this point, I had enough, so I summoned my Mimic and absolutely wrecked the boss. My Mimic was throwing Poison Mist at the boss while I was using Rock Sling, and this was the perfect combo to completely delete Renala. I then take the time to unlock a brand new farming area, and I'm sure a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about. The good old bow chicken farm. To unlock this farm, simply talk to the no maidens guy, complete three invasions with the finger he gives you, return back to the starting area of the game, pick up the Lord of Blood's favor, and bro will give you the Pure Blood's Knight's Medal. You have the sweetest scream. What the f Using this item will give you access to the Mogwin's Palace, which is where the farming spot is at. And with the mixture of Gold Pickled Foulfoot and the Gold Scarab Talisman, you can collect a lot of runes. So I did this and returned back to Estelle. This time, instead of using the Mimic tier, I used the Summon Latena to provide sniper support while I take on the boss. Using the Mimic also cuts a chunk out of your health, and my goal was to conserve as much HP as possible. This time, Estelle actually let me hit him. It was like he was too intimidated to fight back because of how overleveled I was. And so, the worst boss in the game goes down. I can now finally finish Rani's quest line by killing this dragon and talking to her. With this quest line completed, I receive the Dark Moon Greatsword, which will be very handy for a fight later on. And I pick up the best summon in the game that happens to be close by. Black Knife Tish. Tish? Tish? This summon puts a status effect on a boss that will slowly drain their health, making fights 10 times easier to get through. Hey, if I'm not gonna be healing, best bet I'm gonna use this guy. And the combination between my magic and the summon just wiped the floor with some of these bosses. So the rest of this run should be pretty smooth, right? Well, kind of. For the most part of the run, me and Tish defeated boss after boss after boss. By this point, I got him to plus 10, and I wanted to see if he could take out a boss on his own. So I pick up the best armor set in the entire game, and I make my way to Morgoth. I waste no time by summoning Tish right away, and I run back to watch the carnage unfold. And oh my god, slowly but surely, the summon was able to dwindle down his health so low that I actually couldn't believe what I was seeing. I tried to sit down at this throne for for a better view, but my 700 pound fat ass broke the chair by barely even touching it. Morgoth did not like that I broke his chair as he immediately came in swinging on me, almost killing me. But I managed to still get away and watch the fight unfold. And eventually, Black Knife Tish finishes off Morgoth by doing a jumping stab attack, just like how I finished off the Mimic tier. I'm proud of you, Black Knife. But unfortunately, the further we got through the game, his potential severely dropped, as bosses got harder and harder, like Moog the Omen for example. Sometimes the summon wouldn't even fight the boss, as you can see here, and so death after death after death, I finally had one good attempt where Moog was distracted on the summon, and I was able to snipe the boss with Rock Sling. Even if his damage isn't doing the best, he's still probably one of the best summons in the game because of how quick he moves. Moving on, I make my way to the Frenzied Flame ending area, totally didn't mess this up a whole bunch of times. Here I pick up the fingerprint stone shield, which will be important for a build later on. Finally make it to the bottom, set up the grace, and I leave the area. My next adventure is to head up north. Up here I obtain the trophy for collecting all legendary sorceries and incantations. Also, forget what I said about Estelle being the worst boss in the game. These death right birds are the most annoying enemy in the game, and I'll have to defeat multiple of these birds to achieve 100%. Now with this big stupid bird out of the way, we can now face the next major boss. Commander Nile. The fight begins by 
by him summoning these knights that I quickly cut down with my magic sword. And it was rock sling after rock sling. I had a few close calls while dodging the boss, but in the end, Black Knife Tish finished the boss and ended the fight. <laughs> From there, I decided to be ballsy and make my way to Melania's Grace. And on my way over there, I faced the boss Loretta the Knight, but she ended up going down no problem. I encounter another Scarlet Rot swamp section that somehow manages to be worse than the Lake of Rot, all because of these stupid bug enemies that will tear you apart if you don't take them out. And so, after massacring all the bugs, I scoot my thick ass through all the sludge, and I arrive at Melania's Grace. But I wasn't exactly ready to take on Melania just yet. I had other matters to attend to, like the Fire Giant. This fight for me is always pretty tricky. The first phase is easy. You just smack his foot around and that's that. The second phase though is the hard part. Mostly because I don't know where you're supposed to damage him on the second phase. It seems like everywhere I hit it does minimal damage. So this took me a few sad attempts. But eventually I was able to brute force the boss with the spell Comet Azure. Shoving my staff so far up the fire giant that it killed me in the process. I won, but at what cost? With the fire giant killed, Melina asked me if I'm ready to do the dirty and she sets flame to the Erd tree, earning me a trophy and teleporting me to a brand new area. Before we take on this area, I take the time to max out one of my seals so that I can do more damage to the bosses in this upcoming fight. This is a fight that I've been dreading since the beginning of this run, the Foreskin Duo, aka Knockoff, Ornstein, and Smo. Not only do I do no damage to these guys, they completely shredded my summon Black Knife Tish every single time. I had so many close attempts and I was starting to lose hope. So with trial and error between a bunch of different spells, I finally found a working strategy which involves using rotten breath the downside of this strat is that it takes forever i also had to pray that my summon would stay alive long enough to distract the bosses so that i could sneak over and poison them and eventually with a sliver of health left and pure luck on my side i was able to drag out the fight long enough for them to be poisoned to death the godskin duo was down but i realized i had another challenging boss up next the malekith fight was going to be extra hard without healing if you happen to get hit by him you will get a status effect that will drain your health over time. And since I can't heal through it, this is very problematic. So I followed the same strategy as the foreskin duo. I hit the boss with rotten breath and ran around the map hoping that I could drag out the fight long enough. And my first few attempts were actually very solid. All I had to do was not get hit. I decided to be more aggressive by throwing in some rock slings. And then something crazy happened. Me and the boss ended up killing each other. And I was praying that the trophy would pop and the fight would be over. But since Malekith won't shut up after he dies, I thought I would have to restart the fight. But suddenly, the trophy pops at the last second. Just one second off and I would have to restart this entire fight. Now we can return back to the capital and I obtain a trophy for collecting every legendary talisman in the game. Here I also destroy Sir Gideon with no health by the way, by stun locking him with my magic sword. And before continuing on into the capital, there is still a lot of cleanup that I need to do. I face this boss, Elmer of the Briar, which is a very underrated boss. Probably one of the better bosses in the game just because of his cool moveset. I also run through this dungeon to kill the final boss and obtain a very important summon that we'll need for a fight later, along with getting the trophy for collecting every legendary summon in the game. I then get voluntarily kidnapped and end up at the Volcano Manor. Here I take on the Godskin Noble, which is the fat one out of the duo, and with him being by himself, he was pretty easy to take down. Another trophy for the books. This next fight is kind of random, but it's for a trophy. I must repeatedly hug and talk to this woman, and once I do that enough times, a freaking dragon spawns out of nowhere. Yeah, this game can be pretty random, but by using Terra Magica and Comet Azure, I was able to delete this boss in seconds. Design wise, I think this is one of the coolest dragons in the Soul series, though. And now time for Moog, the Lord of Blood. This fight should be pretty easy. Oh, no. Okay, never mind. So this boss has a mechanic in his second phase where he will proc bleed damage on you three times in a row. And of course, I can't heal through it. I even tried picking up Moog's shackle to see if I could cancel out that attack, but the shackle only works in his first phase. So with no more options on hand, I had to pull out the cheese on this guy. By entering the boss arena, quitting, then reloading, you can spawn outside the boss gate, but force the boss to spawn in the game, which means if you fall through the map and force everything in the area to die, you can kill Moog without even entering the arena. And I know some of you are gonna say challenge failed, and to that I say, get good, scrub. After that, I was still in a cheesy mood, so I decided to take down Dragon Lord Placidusax by only using a summon. This took a little while, but Latena got the job done. It is now time for the fight that you've all been waiting for, Mommy Melania herself. Now this fight was actually very fun. This summon right here, Red Main Knight Oga, is an absolute unit for this fight. While I sit back and spam Dragon 
and ice, Olga will completely bully the boss in her first phase. Now that's her first phase. The second phase is a whole different story. But after what felt like hours of trying, Melania aggros Olga right away, and I try to sneak up behind them for damage. She sees this and tries to take me out, but my dragon ice counters her attack, and I quickly get out of there. Melania then uses her massive rose attack, and Olga charges in, sacrificing his life for me. With Olga dead, I fully commit to doing as much damage as possible. And again, with luck on my side, I managed to take down Melania right when she was about to attack me. Rest in peace, Olga. You fought well. Next up is Godfrey, in his human form. I used Rotten Breath on him since I already had this build going, and this was pretty scary. At half health, just before he goes into second phase, he throws a temper tantrum and stomps the ground all over the arena. But with the mixture of Black Knife's debuff and my Rotten Breath, he was able to go down pretty fast. I am now at the point to where I can beat the game, but we're not going to do that just yet. I change up my entire build to focus on strength, I equip the fingerprint stone shield and the serpent hunter spear, and I make my way to fight Rykard. I also summon my mimic here, but he only has a staff with scholar shield equipped, so he's just here for moral support. And with this deadly combo, I was able to take down this boss so fast. He could barely hit me because of how overpowered the shield was, but I could hit him because of how overpowered I was. <laughs> And finally, I pick up my final non-ending trophy for collecting every legendary weapon in the game. Now that the trophies are out of the way, it's time for the real grind. Before beating the game and getting the platinum, I decided now would be the best time to take out every single mini boss that I was missing. So I looked up a two hour and 33 minute guide and immediately got to work, starting with the Soldier of Godric. Yep, this is gonna take a long time. Cue the boss montage. And so I spent the next few hours searching for every single living, breathing boss on the map. With no healing flask in hand, I searched every crevice looking for worthy foes, and nobody stood a chance against my pokey poke build. Most of these bosses were copy and pasted a million times over, and sure, some bosses were tougher than others, but in the end, they all died the same. Each boss killed was getting me one step closer to becoming Elden Lord. At this rate, I was an unstoppable force of nature, wreaking havoc in the lands between everywhere I went. I could taste the platinum trophy from here. All I had to do now was not lose my sanity or die from boredom, and victory was in my reach. The amount of time it took me to do this was equivalent to two Joe Rogan podcasts, and with quick math that comes out to 5 hours and 23 minutes of just killing bosses. And for your sanity, I didn't include too many duplicate bosses, just the bosses that I thought were interesting. The absolute worst part of this boss list, for me at least, was fighting all of the death right birds. Those bosses absolutely suck. The Knight's Calvary was another fight I hated, especially the duo where you have to kill both of them for the fight to even count. But besides that, this process wasn't too bad. Being able to just brute force everything was by far the funnest part of this experience, even though I changed up my build a little bit towards the end. And the final mini boss I took on in this list was in the Lake of Rot. All I had to do was use the Flame Cleanse Me incantation and that was that. And with all the bosses defeated, it's finally time to beat the game. At the final boss gate, I summon this guy called Damage PSR 7, and I thought that is a sweat name if I've ever seen one, so I knew right away he would be good for the fight. The Radagon fight went very smooth. Damage ran up to the boss using his stone shield with a spear, which gave me the perfect opportunity to use my Moonlight Greatsword. And with little effort and no damage taken, Radagon goes down like nothing. And the second phase for the Elden Beast actually went way smoother than the Radagon fight. I don't know what weapon damage was using here, but it inflicted the same status effect as Black Knife Tish. The damage we were outputting was actually insane. The Elden Beast tried to run away, but he couldn't outrun us. The boss falls, and me and damage PSR 7 celebrate, and surprisingly no damage was taken during this fight. Now the very last thing I had to do was complete all the endings. I used the PlayStation Cloud backup to scum save, and I know this is against some people's religion, but I had to do it to save time. The first ending I went for was the Frenzied Flame ending, where you become the Lord of Frenzied Flame and completely destroy the map. The next ending I got was the Age of Stars ending. You get this by completing the Rani quest line, which we did earlier. Probably one of the more liked endings as you get to side with waifu Rani for the rest of your life. And the final ending was to become Elden Lord, earning me the last ending trophy, and finally, Elden Ring's Platinum Trophy. This entire run ended up taking me 55 hours, which is actually not that crazy due to all the farming we did, but there we have it. I achieved the Platinum Trophy and defeated every single boss in Elden Ring without healing. Thank you all for watching. If you made it to the end, I really do appreciate you. Join the community Discord server and follow me on Twitter to stay connected. And if you enjoyed this video, you might like my Dark Souls 1 Platinum video, you can click on screen to watch.